Right. So this is the process of naming a business. You don't get pissed off. Why? Because it's freaking 2021 and almost every goddamn fun name and username on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook is taken. And so what? Right. You keep going. Mm -hmm. When Peloton decided they wanted to be Peloton, Peloton.com is already taken. Right. So they just said, fuck it. We're going to go with <laughs> one Peloton and that's <laughs> yeah, ours. Right. That's it. Probably because Peloton wasn't trademarked and they trademarked it. So they're like, it's not that big of a deal to right, us. Right, right. So don't make it a big deal if the five names that you want are taken. They're probably going to be taken. Hey guys, welcome back to the Push <laughs> Podcast. I'm Janelle Copeland. And I'm Edward Copeland. And it is a fun day today because we had um, iced tea, coffee, and donuts. For breakfast. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. Let we also went to the gym before. Can I, can I paint the picture for the Fine, people? Fine, go ahead. Okay, so we go to this. <laughs> when we decide to treat ourselves with a, and I want to say treat because I was just getting on someone the other day that You're human beings dog. don't treat themselves. You're not a dog. You treat dogs when they do something. Human, human beings make a decision to indulge and have something. Okay. All right. So we decided to have something sweet. And so we go to this uh, this wonderful uh, donut shop. Our it's favorite called donut shop. Upland Donuts. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy, just Upland Donuts. Just good ass donuts. But they make them fresh. They're like right off of the fryer. Right. And so um, I had a apple fritter mm -hmm. that would knock your socks off. I mean, <laughs> as I th think about it, like eating it, my socks flew off. You're right? ridiculous. And, but uh, I put it in the air fryer for just you know like two or three minutes, and it was perfect. I love that for I you. I just wanted the people to, to hear that. Um, you know, but you got to have a little indulgence sometimes, right? Yes. A little sugar. And it's going. been a while since we had. So today we decided we were going to treat ourselves. Absolutely. After a nice hard workout, we went and got Upland Donuts. Shout out to Upland Donuts. Uh, they're our favorite donut shop. That's not local. It's about 25 minutes away. Yeah, so we make so. a we make a march out there. We're those foodies, though, that are going to drive wherever we think the food is the best. Right, and I almost regret telling you guys about this because then it's going to be a longer line than it already <laughs> is, which upsets me. But that's, that's okay. You could tell them that Sharing your favorite is donut is the one with the sprinkles, so that way yeah. they buy all those because that is not what you get. No, no, that's <laughs> not what I get. The Anyways, sweetest I get is apple fritter. Um, yes. Okay, yeah. so we're going to dive into today, to today's episode because I think it might take us a while to tell this story, but I'm uh, super pumped. I have a pumped. what in the world, though. Okay, fine. Go fast. What in the world? Okay, so my what in the world is this. Um, we watched a documentary with Mark Wahlberg. So good. So good. Yes. So, so, so good. So my Let what in the world is, the one, it is fantastic. It is Wall, no, uh, Wall Street. Yeah, I think yeah. it's called Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, and basically, it's about six episodes or so of him um, basically filming him starting some companies, investing in companies. And we'll talk about the worst like luck that you can imagine. I mean, you got this successful actor and producer who is investing in companies, he's starting companies, uh, and he's, so, he's heavily in part of these day to day in and day outs. And so... My what in the world it wasn't that. My what in the world is how does he still learn his lines? <laughs> like it's I called was, Wall like, Street. W A H L Wall Street. It's on HBO. <laughs> and so like our kids are actors, and I don't understand how they r memorize an entire performance or play or, or musical they're in. That is crazy to me. I could barely <laughs> remember my m memorize like daily memorize push. You can't even memorize a fifteen second daily push <laughs> for like, TikTok. I'm like, what was I supposed to say? Right. Uh, but. One, he's he's got he's flying around, he's going to all these different businesses, and then he's like in the middle of it doing movies, and I'm just like I right. don't understand. I would have to be like glued to my script in order for me to like really understand my ly my lyrics, my my rhymes. My, what are you saying? My lines in the movie. <laughs> So let me tell you what my what in the world is with that. First of all, you need to know that if you're friends with Janelle and Eddie, the way that we watch TV is very interactive. We yeah. are going to press pause probably 50 times in a 30 minute um, time period because we want to stop and discuss right. and like figure out what the lesson is. And we're just learners. We're people of learner. We're people who love lessons, right? Yeah, we're either doing that or making some wise ass comment <laughs> about whatever's so going on. So here's how this works though. Wahlberg, uh, Wall Street. Mark Wahlberg, um, he's a, an actor, he's a rapper, he does lots of things that you know. <laughs> he hasn't for. been a rapper for a well, long time. Well, okay. Yeah, Marky Mark, Mark and the Mark Funky, and the funky bunch. bunch. Anyways, 
<laughs> Feel the vibration. <laughs> move it, move it. Is that what it is? Come on, come on. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so he not only does film and no more music, but he has uh, a clothing line that he just started to start, which is called Municipal. Right. He has a production company, which he decided to start. Which is he has, solely focused on documentaries. Right. Right. He has uh, Wahlburger, which is a restaurant <laughs> company that his that brother kind of decided to start. Yeah. So he has this like pie chart of like, I spend this much time on movies. I have this much time on this, you know, this this business. And this documentary is, it's a six series. And basically it's all of these businesses right. are coming to life. Oh, and a fitness company. I can't remember he's what it's called. To, he's trying to, well, F45 is, it's, it has its own company, but he's trying to be a, a franchise owner. Right. And then I think, it's, what was it called? A, like a max franchise, like franchisee or Doesn't something matter. where you own a ton of them. Okay, so <laughs> let's get this straight again. This is right before the pandemic. Right. He's diversifying as an investor, as an entrepreneur, starting all of these businesses. And so this is the journey of his entrepreneurship journey, right? So he says, okay, I started this gym company. Within a couple of months, we got 1,500 gyms open mm -hmm. nationwide, right? right? 1,500 gyms, pre-pandemic people. He starts a clothing company called Municipal. This is pre-pandemic. And it's like now all of a sudden you're walking through the pandemic and there's no factory workers. There's no supplies, right? He starts the restaurant. Uh, restaurants were really struggling. Food industry were really struggling during the pandemic. So he starts all this stuff and the production company. No actors working. So four businesses out of the gates. Right. The pandemic hits and the whole six series is about him losing his shit <laughs> as an entrepreneur, which he did a really great job. He's got a positive mindset and you kind of just got to go with it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's really phenomenal. You should watch it because you should watch it to know that you're not the only right. one that was faced with, you know, a shit storm potentially in your business. And he had four businesses that were struggling. The gyms, as soon as they open, boom, closed down. And no he, more gyms. No, you forgot he was going to invest in a, 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 grocery, a grocery store. store. Uh, and then... You know, that kind of fell apart because um, obviously, obviously because of the pandemic. Right. But what was so intriguing to me is he's doing movies at the same. Like, right. I mean, he took some time off, obviously, because, um, you know, production start, stopped for movies. But then when production kind of kicked back up again, he was still active. And, you know, so that was really intriguing to me. But what I really enjoyed watching was like it was real life. Like they didn't they didn't sugarcoat anything like one of the a couple of the businesses almost just collapsed. Like right. the the clothing company was like in real in peril. Well, they all their investors pulled, pulled out, right? Because their investors lost a ton of money in the stock market. Yeah, and so they just weren't as liquid to invest. They in were this like, company. we either go all in and continue, or we put it on pause and stop. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to be ordering some municipal shirts for Eddie for probably his birthday or Father's Day, oh. just because. They did surprised. such a great job walking you through like that's not a good cut. That material doesn't feel good. I don't like that. So right. they're like $60 t-shirts, but you can tell that they're not cheap ass t-shirts. Right, like right. they're the kind of t-shirts that are going to last you for a really long time. So it's a casual leisure brand, but it's not just like I see people all the time. Hey, uh, Janelle, I need some help. I'm starting a clothing line. You're not starting a clothing line. You're printing your logos or your sayings on some shirts that someone else is making. He's literally making the shirts. The blends. Like two, yeah. Like making the, blends, the actual the colors, blends. Dyeing the colors. Right. It was really impressive. And so I, and, go watch and, that. And you learn a lot because you know some of those things are proprietary. Like you create your own t-shirt blend. It's mm -hmm. yours. Like you can license that out you can right. sell it. it it's a you know it has a very specific feel to it that was a really good learning for me this uh, t-shirt's okay i like this t-shirt i it's like this blend municipal it's not municipal but it is paper planes um mm -hmm. shout Could out to be paper better. planes uh, I, is I like that jay-z's brand that i th i think he's an investor in it but yeah. okay so let's dive in today's uh podcast you ready I am ready. I'm really excited. <laughs> this is episode number 87 of the Push Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how I would start any kind of business right now from the very beginning and still pay myself and create profitability. Right. I'm so fired up about this. Let me tell you why. Uh, farmers markets are starting to get, you know, they're starting to be put on again. Um, starting to get the green light was what I was going to say in certain cities and towns, regardless of where you're at. You got to check your local listings. So 
Last week, Jordan and I stumble across um, the farmer's market in Covina. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, okay, we're back open again. This is really cool. I always love going to farmer's markets because I want to see what lo local small businesses are out there kind of promoting their business, right? And I wish I had the bag in front of me, but I don't. So um, we start browsing around. And I will just tell you one of my biggest pet peeves is if you want to make money and you're doing a pop-up shop or a farmer's market, don't sit your ass on a chair behind your booth <laughs> and just wait for people to ask you to take their money. It drives me bananas. And if you want to learn how to properly do a farmer's market or a pop-up shop, go to JanelleCopeland.com. I'm going to give you um, a coupon and you're going to use the coupon code PUSH, P-U-S-H. And I'm going to give you two trainings for $99 because this could change your life. And every one of those people at that farmer's market needed that training. Yeah. And can I just say something about that? Because we've been to a lot of uh, conventions and and I, that is one of my, my, uh, my biggest pet peeve is when people are just sitting back and not understanding they're trying to defy a law. The law is motion. If you are moving around, you can create motion and you can create emotion mm -hmm. when you're moving and you're active and you're and you're trying to make something happen. What's you know when a, when an object is in is is it is in is not in motion, it, you you can't move it. You so you, like your business is not going to move unless you do. So please. Well, that's real deep, babe. Get, I just want to say, if you want to make money, up. get up. Yeah. Get up. Talk to people. Don't wait for people to come to you. You you, you got to weigh people down. I right. mean, you got to get hungry. Right. So that's what it was. Yeah. I don't know that they were hungry. Maybe they were still tired from the pandemic. I'm not sure. <laughs> Dude, I'm but literally, it just opened. So I'd be fired up, rejuvenated. This right. is my business. I need some money. I need some customers. So anyways, we walk around. There's a guy. Then he's selling plants. And they don't look particularly special they're right. just like maybe he was growing them in his backyard they're like in the cheap plastic containers that he grew them in and he has a sign up it's handwritten it says you know four dollars to six dollars come okay. get some plants so you know there's people looking at his stuff like they're interacting and he's just kind of like sitting down on a chair behind and i'm like okay he's like what do you want me to say maybe they'll magically give they're, him some money i don't know <laughs> um so that was intriguing and that was a handwritten sign with the price tag then someone else was selling for fruits and vegetables. We bought up a couple of fruits and vegetables. So we make our way around and everything's kind of like some booths are kind of cute, you know, whatever. We make our way around and there's this nail booth. Nails, right? And it says Marcy's Marvelous Manicures. Oh. And she's got a big banner and she's passing out samples. Let me explain to you what she sells. These decals that go on your nails that are basically uh, nail polish. Oh, wow. You put them on, it's a sticker, you file over it, and you're good to go. So Jordan and I are like, we love nails, tell us more, Marcy, right? So she's up, she's interacting, she's telling you, and I said, okay, um, she goes, here, have you ever tried this? And this these? is Marcy. This is Marcy. Okay, Marcy's So in shout house. out to Marcy's Marvelous Mannies on Instagram. Okay. Okay, so... Um, she's got this booth and then she has a helper in the back sitting down. It's her husband. Okay. So I said, oh, you got a staff. And, and he goes, I'm just here to set up the booth. Right. But nice people. So I said, these are really cool. Love the colors. How much are they? She said, they're $11. Or if you get three for 33, I'll give you one for free. Mm, okay. Bundle. So we talk three a lot about that. Three thirty-three, and I'll give you one for free. Right. It even rhymes. I like that. Yeah. So it's. I said, Jordan, you pick out two. I'll pick out two. We're for sure. And I said, you probably only take cash. And she said, Nope. I do Venmo, Square. I was like, That's what the hell I'm talking about, Marcy. So me, take my money. So let me ask you. So these things are thirty. So each one is eleven dollars. Right. Okay. But okay. I can get four for thirty-three dollars. Okay, and it's deal. Okay. So then she says, before we had even decided to buy anything, she's like, have you ever tried these? Let me give you a sample. So she gives us a sample. There are those cheap um, like Mardi Gras beads. Mm -hmm. It's a necklace. And on the necklace, she has stapled two little sample nails to this necklace with her card, with her uh, QR code. Everything goes back to Marcy's manicures. Mm. So she, Jordan's like, she gave us a necklace like this is so it's something that's not like a sample like if it's a little piece of paper you're going to toss it in the trash right. right so this is something like maybe you put on we saw so, so many people wearing them around the events so i was like really impressed with that right so we give marcy our 44 dollars maybe 
we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. So we give Marcy our $33 for our four nail decals. We walk away and Jordan goes, all right, Marcy, I see you. Like, it was just impressive, right? right? She also asked for our address, our email address, our phone number, all the stuff. And I didn't give all that, but I was like, well, we'll try them out. Just long story short, Jordan and I have been wearing them all week. And I called her yesterday to ask her to place another order. Wow. And okay. she put it together quickly. I picked it up and I told her what a great job she was doing with her branding and this and that. While I was there, I asked her, I said, does it cost to participate in this farmer's market? And she said, yes, ma'am, it costs $40. And I was like, that's a great deal. She said, yes, it is. As she finished helping me taking my $33, she had five other customers waiting in line. Wow. So that's a killing, right? She's also selling something she doesn't have to make with her hands like I did, like cupcakes, Wait, right? So when did you have to, you went to her house or you went to She happens to live around the corner and so I followed her QR code gotcha. that she put on the sample, she okay. put it on my bag, she put a sticker on every one of my products. Great job of branding. Right. She purchased the domain Marcy's Marvelous Mannies. Okay. Right. So it goes straight when you scan the QR code, go straight to her Instagram. You can place an order. So I message her an order, pay for it. And she said, hey, I'm working from home. I live in Covina. I'm not at the farmer's market this weekend. And I said, oh, I really wanted to get some more. She said, well, you know, where do you live? We realize we live around the corner from each other. So I swing by. She handed me this beautiful bag with a beautiful bow on it and said, thank you so much for supporting my small business. There you go. So it was great. So that inspired me. And I was like, if I had to start a business right now, right. what would I do? From the beginning to the end, I'm going to walk you guys through the entire process because I was just so inspired that I was like, maybe I'm going to start a business. <laughs> I'm going to document it. I'm going to walk through every single cost that I can think of including the $40 to go to a farmer's market mm -hmm. and how much money could I make and would it be profitable? Okay. You down? I'm, I'm down. Say yes, I'm down. I miss I, I am down. Okay. So this is the first step. Um, what are you going to make or buy? So for me, for this example, some of you might know if you follow Janelle Copeland, I love succulents. I recently, not within the year, started gardening, planting, and I love like the propagation of succulents. I love... Um, the fact that they kind of multiply. I love the fact you can nurture them. It's just like an escape for me. So I would not turn it into a business. But in this example, I'm going to pretend that I am because people ask me all the time for succulent arrangements now. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, no, I don't want you to rob me of my joy. I just really <laughs> love doing this. But for this example, we're going to start a business and it's going to be a succulent business. And I'm going to go be a competitor of the guy that was selling the plants sitting in his booth. Okay. You got it? Okay. Okay, so first thing you have to ask yourself, what's it going to cost me to make or buy whatever it is I'm going to start this business on? Mm -hmm. So in Marcy's case, she had to make an investment of purchasing these nails because it's not something she makes, right? The, right? the decals. Right. So she had to make an initial investment and then she's going to work her way through how many can I sell? What's the profit going to be? How much am I going to pay myself? All that stuff, right? Right. So for my example, I'm going to be selling plants. And um, you got to ask yourself, OK, like, where am I going to get those plants? Is there going to be overhead? All of the things. Right. So we'll get into that. But can I, and, and while you're doing this, can I just add the narrative of of what you're doing in a sense? And I'll, you know, um, some, some elements to, to for people to consider. OK, <laughs> well, you're going to do you're going to do succ succulents. But the reason why you're doing succulents uh, is because you have evidence that people want them. They're asking you for them already. OK. Right. So you already have. There's value in it simply because there is a, a need or a want. There is a demand. And so I think it's important to, to, to understand that when you're starting a business right now, what is the evidence that you have that there's a need or demand for it? Um, and we'll talk about times when you do not have those things and when you start a business, but I just wanted to highlight that as you right. start Right, I think that. that that's obviously a good step. But I'm, yeah. And that's great, you should. Is there a product, is there a market demand for this? Do people actually need this? Are there too many competitors? And but sometimes, that, yeah, and sometimes it's just the fact that you want it means right. that there's possibly other that other people want it, want it yeah. as well. 
Okay. Absolutely. So then for me, I'm going to ask myself, what's the cost going to be um, to purchase the product, right? So for me, I would spend time doing research. Research is step number one. I would research where are the local nurseries around me? Where can I get succulents in bulk? How can I buy them at wholesale? What is the cheapest possible way that I can get my hands on the most succulents? And, you know, how far is that, right? The right. next thing is, is am I going to have any sort of overhead that's going to impact my home? Home. Right. So when I started baking from home, my gas bill went up, my water bill went up, my trash bill went up. So for the sake of succulents, I'd say, um, you know, maybe water and trash. Yeah, water. I don't trash. know. Does your water bill go up if you consume too much water? Yeah. Okay. So I would have my water would be part of my overhead, right? And potentially like a trash recycling bin or something. Right. Um, and I think I think at this point now you're you're you will realize so now you've established those things and you know what the cost will be now you're starting to get an understanding could you create something or could you bring something to the market that people may be willing to pay for mm -hmm. because you're going to have a pretty good understanding of where you may be from a price standpoint once you start figuring those things out so that's an important piece to understand like you you may have an idea to do something and it's the the cost to bring it to to the market is so astronomical you're, you're asking yourself will people be willing to pay this and will I be able to create a brand that will command that? Right. So that's why I thought, well, let's play with some numbers and let's share yeah. this podcast. And I want to show you how I did the math so that maybe you can say, you know what? I don't have a very viable business. Yeah. It's not going to be very profitable. So then I'm going to pump the brakes on this and not force it to happen. Okay. Right. So in my situation, I'm not making cupcakes. I'm making succulent arrangements. I'm making succulent arrangements because I already make those. I gift them to people all the time. There's great joy when I'm able to transfer them over. Recently, I made 23 succulent arrangements um, in two hours, and I gave them to every single neighbor on my block just because I wanted to do something nice for spring. Right. And people to this day are still sending thank you cards and bottles of wine, and it's just really, really sweet. So Which I love that. Which is really that. amazing to me because I'm like, who put this plant? If who it was are me, these neighbors? <laughs> who put this plant on my, my front porch? Right. But I'm glad people appreciate it. Okay, so next step after we do all of our research, right, we're collecting data, we're going to be talking about branding but I'm going to give you very specific steps, right? Because you said you need to create a brand that kind of uh, conveys value, right. right? Remember, I'm competing with the guy that wrote on a handwritten sign right. at the farmer's market. So I don't have right. much to compete with, but who knows if I go to another farmer's market, maybe I am. And that's that's significant. So people should understand that. Like if you are putting that out there that, hey, I'm just going to put this on here. You are already putting yourself in a situation when you go to put something up there and you say, this is how much people are like, Bro, you use this a pen. Sharpie. No, I'm not. Some people that. don't care about that. <laughs> Some right? people don't. So, okay, first step of branding is picking a name. Now, we do an entire module on this inside of Passion to Profit, our eight week masterclass. But for the sake of time today, I'm just going to tell you what I did to try to search for a name. I first made a list of all of the things that I thought would be cool everything from root to green, to growth, to homegrown, to grow, like just all of the things that I thought about when it suck, you know, like different things around succulents, names, just to kind of get my creative juices flowing. Right. I then kind of settled with, I really like the way homegrown feels, right? Because okay. I could use like brown paper bags, recyclable stuff, it's plants. So I um, searched the word homegrown to see if that was available on Instagram. Of course it's not. Right. because it's so basic right so then here's a tip go to google and type in synonyms for homegrown and then so there's a ton of words that come up right so then one word that stuck out was aboriginal okay I like that then it kind of led me to other words other words and i was like wait what do i like about succulents i love the propagation about them that's like the multiplying growing oh, okay. additional okay. right yeah so then i was like how can i play with the word propagation I'd love a company just called Propagation. They don't die. They multiply. Okay. There's your tagline there, people. Don't. <laughs> that was for free. <laughs> so Propagation is taken. It's taken right. on Instagram. It's taken on uh, the websites taken. So then I was like, okay, well, what words do I like with it? 
pretty propagation. Pretty propagation is picked, right? right? So this is the process of naming a business. You don't get pissed off. Why? Because it's freaking 2021 and almost every goddamn fun name and username on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook is taken. And so what? Right? You keep going. Mm -hmm. When Peloton decided they wanted to be Peloton, Peloton.com is already taken. Right. So they just said, fuck it. We're going to go with <laughs> one Peloton and that's <laughs> yeah, ours. Right? That's it. Probably because Peloton wasn't trademarked and they trademarked it. So they're like, it's not that big of a deal to right, us. Right, right. So don't make it a big deal if the five names that you want are taken. They're probably going to be taken. So then I was like, pretty. Pretty Propagation LA. I like okay. that. Pretty Propagation LA. So I find it on Instagram. The account's inactive. There's 126 users or followers. I could do a couple things. First, I'm going to check to see if the website's available, which it was for $119. Uh -huh. So Pretty Propagation LA, I could buy for $119, which means I wouldn't have the Instagram. So I could message her and say, hey, I see you have an inactive account. I'd love to buy it from you. Or would you mind? I'm going to start a business. I'll sell you a, send you a plant for free. Whatever. I got to get creative. Right. Right. If I don't want to do that, then I have to come up with another name, period. So now I'm going to go with, um, I started thinking of garden. It's growth. It's garden. I like the purple succulents that I have a lot. And so I decided on Purple Garden LA. I love that. And what's interesting, and I want people to understand like what the process you were looking for something that would match it, cinnamon, cinnamon, but also you were looking at okay, can I tell a story with this? Can right. I tell a story with this? It all comes back to, hey, this is the name I'm thinking about, but can I bring it to something that's significant that would be important to people? Yeah, so Purple Garden LA. Um, purplegardenla.com is available for purchase on godaddy.com, which is your next step. You need to search it, search to see if the domain's available. Why do you need a website? You need a website because it's 2021 and people buy things online. Yep. Period. End of story. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> so it's a dollar per month for me to buy purplegardenla.com. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and binge and I'm going to, I'm going to splurge and I'm going to buy a hundred months of that. Yeah. So hundred bucks I just spent on my website. It's also available on Instagram. So boom, it's secured. There's the name of my business. High five. High five. Purplegardenla.com. I'm not going to tell you what I found when I searched it too. So Eddie said, <laughs> I think it sounds like weed. I think you just started a weed company. Okay. <laughs> next company or the next step then would be do your research. Because if Purple Garden <laughs> makes people think of weed, I'm in trouble with my business. Maybe not because... You know, I don't sell weed, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to be able to pivot wherever your customers are wanting. I'm not no, selling but weed. I'm just saying. What I I would also say is that maybe there are some there are people that do smoke weed on a consistent basis that actually love to propagate and love to do planting. So, so if they're not my target demographic, though, and it makes people feel like it's associated with cannabis, and that's not what I want to do as the cake mama with children, then I'm not going to do that. Yeah. The point is, is do research on your name. Don't get hung up if it's already taken ask around so people can let you know how they feel about it google it see before what comes up <laughs> yeah before you fall in love and spend a hundred months on a website right <laughs> okay next thing i'm going to go to canva.com and i'm going to make a free logo for my new company purplegardenla.com right yeah all right. I'm going to, um, I, at this point, I've already secured my social media following. I have my website. Now I'm making a logo. You with me? I'm with you. I'm going to order some labels because I want to make sure, just like Marcy's Marvelous Manny's, mm -hmm. that I'm going to put my label on everything. I'm going to put it at the bottom of a planter. I'm going to put it on the bag when I let you take it. And I'm going to make sure that I'm asking as many people to share it as possible. So I'm going to focus on some bags, some labels, and some packaging. And then I'm going to get some business cards or flyers. And specifically, I'm going to put on there, because remember, we're doing the farmer's market. I'm going to list upcoming events. I'm going to list how people can contact me, which they can contact me on Instagram now, or they can contact me on my website. Right. Right. And so I'm going to make sure that it says that on all of the flyers and I'm going to order some flyers or business cards or whatever it is that I'm going to be giving and, and out it, to every customer that walks past my booth. And this is and one of the things I think is important that people really need to catch is that you solidified you solidified your digital platform first, mm -hmm. right? Get the digital platform going, get your ability to take people's money online completed 
done immediately. Oh, I'm not be- even there yet. Well, you know, you, you already kind of talked about that. Mm-mm. I haven't got there yet. Um, I was first going to let you know that in addition to the labels, bags, and packaging, and the business cards and the flyers, I'm also going to purchase a banner. Okay. Okay. Like a big banner that says the name of my company, purplegardenla.com. And that's going to cost me $100. I already looked it up. So I'm going to get a and banner. What I w- yeah. And what I was saying is is, is that you solidified um, the Instagram, you solidified the website, you solidified all those digital platforms is because those things are so important, that, you know, which is was slightly different when you started the Cake Mamas, where you could have gone just like homegrown in your neighborhood. And I think a lot of people do that. They wait to put the digital stuff up last and they do everything locally in their city, the banners, business, business cards, and all these things. And then when they decide to go digital, everything's taken. Well, the problem is um, you said that it's slightly different for the Cake Mamas. The Cake Mamas was exactly like that. Like right. we came up with a name that our kids had given us I immediately searched for it the website was available so I purchased it but before I purchased it I checked to make sure that there was a trademark option available for it so I secured the trademark it was a federal trademark which meant that in the United States of America no one else could operate with the name the cake mamas I'm not doing that on this business yet because I don't even know if it's profitable yet Okay. Right? All right. So this is a fake made up business, you guys. If you try to go to purplegardenla.com, I did not buy the domain, but maybe Somebody I will just, just for right fun. Now. <laughs> right? Okay. So I bought a banner. I bought the labels. I bought the packaging, whatever. I'm going to give you the cost for all this stuff too. I'm going to save money and borrow an easy up tent from my friend, Sarah. And then I'm going to get some tablecloths from my friend, Nicole, because yeah. I don't want to buy those. I'm a new business owner and I have to save my pennies. Right. You with me? I'm with you. Now, you said something about payment processing. Now I'm gonna figure out how to take people's money digitally. Mm -hmm. Because one of my biggest pet peeves is people who are being so cheap with starting a business and they're like, oh, I only do cash only because it costs too much, you know, they're gonna take fees. That's part of doing a business in 2021. People don't have cash at the farmer's market. If Marcy's marvelous Manny's wouldn't have had cash at the farm or she wouldn't have been able to take in cards, she would have lost out on sales. Yeah, and this was, and here's how you, uh, you know, equate that. Um, the, the charges that you're getting are gonna be 3% of whatever the sales, but the benefit and what the platform or the, the system you're using to transact your transactions are, it's it's allowing you to take far more than 3%. Right. <laughs> right? And so it's allowing you to grow your business at an exponential rate that would not be able to, to happen if you're only strictly cash. So right. the money you're losing out on, you're actually you know four times, six times, a thousand times making when it comes to having a digital way of taking payments. So, so I'm gonna take sure payments in three forms. I will take your cash. Mm-hmm. I will also, I'm setting up an account with Square, Square Processing, because Square allows me to set up an online website so people can also purchase online when I leave the farmer's market, right? Right. Square takes 3% of your sales. Don't worry, later on, I already calculated how much that I'm estimating I'm gonna be making at the farmer's market, and I'm subtracting the 3% that I'm already anticipating that Square is taking from me, okay? So I'm taking cash, I'm taking Square payments, so all credit cards, and I'm also doing Venmo. Venmo costs you nothing to set up. Yeah. Period. End of story. So I'm also going to go to Best Buy or Amazon, order online an $8 card reader so that way I can process um, payments through Square. Because if you manually input them, they take more money than 3%. I already did my research. Because security issues. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm going to get an $8 swiper. Yep. A square reader, a payment reader, and that's eight dollars. Okay. And can I just real quick make sure if you do have a business right now, make sure that you are swiping or using the chip uh, and not <laughs> typing in credit card numbers. It is costing you a boatload. In 2018, the Cake Mama spent seven thousand dollars manually typing in credit cards for credit card transaction fees, just for the fee alone for manual credit cards. In that moment when I saw that, and think of how many years had gone by when I didn't see that because I wasn't paying attention to that line item. In the moment when I saw that, we stopped taking credit cards online, like over the phone, and we immediately just 
just invoiced them um, from the bakery. Right. So I saved seven thousand dollars. <laughs> so please do not manually type seven thousand dollars could have been a new mixer, a couple I of mean, new mixers. I mean, a lot of things. Yeah. It could have been a nice vacation for us. Absolutely. Whatever. So next step, we're gonna do some freaking math, which okay. is my favorite part. I'm super excited about this. So I'm estimating because I'm gonna be like Marcy. I'm going to book my first debut opening my business is going to be at a farmer's market it's a friday night it's open from 5 p.m until 9 p.m that's four hours right mm -hmm. i'm going to she told me that it costs 40 dollars to be at the farmer's market so i'm going to invest 80 dollars to make sure that i can be there two weeks in a row okay okay so i'm estimating based on you know the fact that it's a local community event there's probably going to be several i'd say 200 people 150 people kind of walking through at at one time. At one time. Okay. I'm estimating that if my plants look amazing and if they're um, presented in a way where people can't live without them, I think I could close 50 customers. Yeah. 50 customers at a price point of $20. 50 customers, price point $20. Okay. okay so that's $1,000. Okay. But remember, I'm going to go two weeks. So I'm estimating that my business is going to make $2,000 and we're going to serve 100 customers. And can I tell you why that's so important? Okay. Uh, it's so important that you... There was a piece of lint, sorry. <laughs> it's so important that you you understand what your goal is, what you're striving for. Because when you go and you open that tent, when you go and you, and you unfold that table, when you start to put your products out there, it is is, an, is a constant reminder, like, this is what this is my goal. This is my strategy. Yeah. This is what I'm going to go for. And you start to act and move in a way to help you achieve that goal. I, I often see people go to those types of things and they don't have a goal. They just are like, I brought products. Let's see what happens. Well, if I had a dollar for every single time someone messaged me or asked me in my private Facebook group, Cake Sense, how much products should I bring to this farmer's market? I have no clue. I have no clue what the traffic is. I <laughs> how have much no do you clue want to sell? <laughs> how many people are going to be there. I have no clue what your budgets are. I have no clue how much it costs you to get into that place, right? right? So for me, it's going to cost me $40. And with the traffic that I saw on a Friday night, providing that it's not a holiday where people are out of town, mm -hmm. that's important, right? I'm estimating that I'm going to close 50 sales on two nights so that's a hundred customers in order for me to do that like you said i gotta show up with energy right. i've got to be standing up i've got to have great products i've got to drink a cup of coffee i've got to make sure that i have help because i plan on helping 50 customers in four hours right right and so, you and you may not achieve that goal but i have a goal but you have you, you have a mile marker like hey this is what i need to do and I will learn regardless whether or not that was reasonable, if it's realistic, or right. I need to adjust it next time. But I think people skip that because they don't want to fall short. Right. Okay, so now let's talk about either making your product. Maybe you're making cupcakes or sourdough bread or wood signs, whatever. I'm making succulent arrangements. So I have secured my succulents at wholesale cost. I don't need a wholesale license or anything. Okay. But I found a place local in LA that's you know not, not too bad of a drive. And I can go and I can get the plants for a dollar. Okay. So I'm going to get these plants for a dollar. And I'm going to put five of them together, which at most, it's probably going to be three to four of them together in an arrangement. But at most, it's going to cost me $5 on the high end. And then On the high end. And so then you are going to curate this, these, Hold these, on. each one of these. Yeah. Right? So okay. I'm going to put all of them together. I'm getting them for a dollar. I'm going to put a couple of them together. And then I'm going to purchase these containers that I already did research on, these beautiful, like different types of glass pots. And I'm going to get them wholesale again without a wholesale license. But I found um, someone who will sell to me in bulk and they're four dollars per container on the high end. OK, so I'm just estimating that each plant is going to cost me nine dollars. Mm -hmm. You with me? Nine dollars times a hundred because I'm selling a hundred is going to cost me nine hundred dollars just to make them. OK, OK. Next. I, I need to get paid for this because this right. is time. I got kids, I've got a household, I've got responsibilities. So I need to make sure that I have the time to actually dedicate to this. So this is what I'm doing. I'm saying that because I'm new at this, it's a new business, I'm okay if I could pay myself $10 an hour just because I don't want it to be for nothing, right? And so I'm gonna estimate that this whole entire business is gonna take me about 
40 hours over the next two weeks. So that's including you. I'm going to break it down for you. So 40 hours over the next two weeks times $10 an hour is $400 that I'm going to earn in labor from this business. So that's for two events. Um, And remember, I told you, I know that I could make 23 plants in two hours. So that's 120 minutes divided by 23 plants. That means that it's going to take me a little over five minutes per plant. Okay. Okay. So um, 40 hours, I'm going to need four hours total and I should be able to make 100 of them. In in eight hours, it's going to take me eight hours. It'll take me to make 100 of them. You with me? I got it. Okay. So of the 40 hours then I'm dedicating eight hours to actually making the product. If you're making a cake or cupcakes or something, it's going to take a lot longer, but this is what I'm selling right now. I'm going to be selling two times a week from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., so that's eight hours, four and four, but I'm going to also give myself an extra hour to set up, tear down, whatever. So I'm giving myself 10 hours to sell, set up, and like stage my products, okay? And so can I just say this really quick? Because you you said you're saying you're putting these together. I would say this is where you want to really start to enhance your self confidence and your self worth when it comes to putting this together. Because you're curating these succulents. You're not just putting them together. You're not just making them. You're you're doing a create curation, meaning that you're using artistry, which you want to make sure is part of how you present these things, in in, in order to give them the value that people that you're trying to transfer to people what you're saying is make a great product make a great yes. product but tell people that you made a great product what you don't want to do is go to that go to the oh know, i made the, that in five minutes. oh I, yeah i make these myself yeah. i make these myself no oh i specially curate them i hand picked each one of these succulents and put them together uh perfectly marrying the two together that i thought went well together like you've got to give it a little bit more gravitas Okay. Is that the right word? I don't know. Sure. Value. So I'm at 18 hours total. I'm right. at 10 hours from my event, set up, tear down. I'm at eight hours of labor. Labor. You with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now I'm allocating the rest of those hours, 22 hours left in my labor to admin activities. So that is, you know, driving around, looking at supplies, doing research online, finding suppliers, making my logo, um, picking up my my labels, stuff like that. So 22 hours of admin work to work on the business, not actually create the product. So taking pictures of them, you know, posting things on on social, stuff like that. I have 22 hours to do okay. admin work. Yeah. Yep. So that's the difference. We just finished the series in Cake Sense and it's, you know, hey, how to work on your business versus in your business. So from the get go, in just the beginning concept stages, I'm giving myself time to actually work on the product and then time for admin hours to tend to the business because I have to set up a website. I have to learn how to sell, how to build a website. I've never done that before. Right. I have to learn how to use Square. I have to test it. So I need time for that. You gotta make right? the time. So I'm giving myself 22 hours for that. So total um, in labor, if I'm making $10 an hour times 40 hours total to work on this business, it's going to be $400 in my pocket that I'm making just mm-hmm. as an employee of this business. Okay? Okay. Next, here's the breakdown of exactly what I've spent money on so far. So, so far, I have the plants that cost me $900. I have the labels and the banner that cost me $150. I purchased bags from Smart and Final. They're just brown paper bags. I get a ton of them and it's only 10 bucks. I'm factoring in the fact that Square is gonna take 3% of my sales and I told you I was gonna do $1,000 in sales, Right. right? So they're taking 30 bucks right there. I factored in the fact that I bought my website for $100 and I paid $80 for two weeks at the booth. You got it? Got it. So my total cost is going to be $1,270. And that's without my labor. So I'm sorry, I'm making $2,000 at the farmer's market because remember, I'm going two times. That's based, okay, so you're selling, based on your selling price, you're making If I can help 50 customers and sell the plants at $20 a pop, then week one, I'll make $1,000, and week two, I'll make $1,000. Gotcha. So it's going to cost me just to show up the way that I want to show up with the website, the square reader, the transaction fees, all that stuff. It's going to cost me $1,270. I haven't made a penny, but this is my initial investment. Okay. Okay, now I know that I want to pay myself. 
So that's gonna bring up the total, I'm adding $400 to $1,670. So in order for me to break 100% even, no profit, no nothing, I have a minimum goal of $1,670. Right. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I hit my goal and I make $2,000, then that gives me sixteen. That gives me $330 in profit. I'm just gonna tell you right now, this does not look like a viable business that I would do long term because it's only 17% profit that I'm making. Right now, and you still gotta go back and buy more plants. Well, okay, so I'm walking away with two things. I'm walking away with $330 in profit mm -hmm. for only $40 of labor or 40 hours of my time. Right. So it could be a fun hobby, right? right? Hey, I made a little bit of change, $330. That's how much I made. I also earned $400 from this business. So total there is 400 and, or there's $730. Now that's very important for you guys to understand because I paid myself as an employee, so that is my money. It doesn't belong to the company. In order to bring the company to life, I made $400. Right. The business made 330. So when you're asking yourself like, you know, oh, did I make a lot of money? If you didn't factor in your labor, then you would have thought that you're, oh God, that's like 40% markup. No, you got to pay yourself first and then the business gets the profit. Right. So it significantly lowers because it's adding to the cost of doing the business. Right. Right. But and, and this is where people get messed up. Right. And so you, you go through this, you create this business and now you're now you got to go back and you got to buy more supplies to go back to the um, the event. Right. And right now. No, based sorry. That's with me going, I have enough inventory, enough plans, everything's taken care of. So after a two week kind of trial period for this business, I, I made 17%. But are you going to go it. back for another two weeks? I need to decide. Do I want to do it? That's the point of this podcast right. is like, this is how much that I'm capable of making if I only help 50 people if I only sell them for $20. So right. if I sell them and change the numbers, then that changes everything. Right. So let me do some quick math while you talk because if instead I think that I can command with the look of the products that I'm selling, maybe I can charge $25, especially because Mother's Day's coming up. And I noticed that maybe after the first week at the market, people thought it was a great deal. So they right. bought like three or four of them. If people are buying three or four, then you probably know that you're it's not priced well enough. Right. It's right. not priced high enough, right? So I'll do some quick math and then you, what do you want to talk about? Um, That's how I would start a business. Well, yeah, and I think it was the, the key thing too is is those are the, the ideas in which people start businesses. They look at the math, they do, they break down the math and they say, okay, this is, this is how you, you know, create some type of income. But I think one of the things that helps you with identifying whether is this a viable business is understanding, like, is this a problem that people have that they consistently? And what that means is, is will you have people who keep coming back to you to solve this problem? Now, if you're selling plants, that may be the case. They may come back to you for a certain amount of time until they complete whatever garden or whatever activities they're doing. Uh, but how do you make sure that that problem is still there for them? And I think that that's where you have to get in, you know, use innovation and you have to make sure that whatever you're creating, you can build on that, right? And so like I think about companies that I like, that I enjoy doing business with. So I like Warby Parker, right? So Warby Parker has a significant uh, market share when it comes to glasses, right? And so you, and then one of the things they do that make them very unique is that they have a very unique delivery system of the products, right? So you can order five sample glasses, mm -hmm. try them all on, and then find the one that you really love. And then you keep, you, and then you send back and you go back online, tell them what you love. And then like a week or two later, you get your glasses in. And that process in itself keeps you going back for more because of the fact that it's so easy and it's convenient, but also what it, what it does is there's a story behind Warby Parker as well that when you get your glasses and you, uh, and you and you and you see the the clean off cloth they tell you a story of why they're in business mm -hmm. and that every time you buy glasses 
they they donate and so now you're part of something and so those things really drive value they really drive you talking about it drove me to talk about it on this podcast and that's the kind of thing you want to think about when you're creating a business and some of those things we talk about in passion and profit no all of those things yeah. we talk about in passion and profit i'm just keeping it super like low level yeah. this is what i would do to start right so just to let you guys know i increased my selling price i'm helping 50 people still Mm -hmm. each night at the night market or at the farmer's market. But instead of selling my products for $20 now, I decided I'm gonna sell them for 25. Okay. So already that increased my profitability. My business now made $830. Mm -hmm. I still made $400 in cash labor. That was my what I earned as an employee. And now I have a business that's operating at a profit level of 33%. Okay. My business generates 33% profit. Okay, gross margin. Gross margin. Okay. It's pure money in the bank. So let's just say that this was a cupcake business and you did the same math on this. And the point is, is you got to figure out if it's too much, like you're like, oh God, there's no way I could pay myself for all the hours I work. Then you have to figure out how to play with the costs. Like the costs don't go away, right? You're still spending time on the business. You have to figure out how to decrease the cost of the products that you're that you're making maybe or the products that you're purchasing in order to sell. You have to figure out how to maybe up level your branding so that way you can increase the price and people will want to pay more. Or you have to figure out how to... Um, you know, be at an event where there's more people maybe that might cost you more upfront, but now you have more opportunities to close more sales. But this is the math, people. If you want to start a business of any kind, this is the way you do it. There is no, well, I couldn't afford to pay myself in the beginning, so that's money that the business needed. No, any business from the beginning, you have to you have to factor in labor. Right. Because someone has to do the making, the buying, the admin work. Someone has to be working on the business, whether it's you, your husband, your kids, whatever. You have to, from the beginning, lay the foundation that we pay for labor. So yeah. don't get rid of that. And one of the things I have, I have written down here is when you're when you're starting a business and you create a, an amazing value, it's people people want it, they need it, um, they're willing to pay the price, uh, and it satisfies the customers' needs and expectations. And then the key thing is is so that it, the business brings in enough profit to make it worthwhile for the owners to continue operation. Okay, so we're gonna end it right there because this business that I started, what is it, Purple Garden, L.A. Yep, I think so. Um, this fictitious business that I started is yielding me right now 33% of my returns, mm -hmm. right? I have to decide, is that a viable business? Would I feel comfortable if I made a million dollars worth of cupcakes and I only made 33% on my business? Right, you right. have to decide. Nobody can decide that for you. Some people are operating a business with negative profit right now and they love their business. They would do it for free and they are doing it for free. In some cases, it's costing their family money because they want to hold on to this business. Some business owners that I know will not get into business unless the business is yielding a 75% return. So you get to decide as a business owner what your time is worth, regardless of whether you sell t-shirts, sourdough bread, succulents, cupcakes, dog grooming, whatever. You have to sit down and do the legitimate math to decide whether this is worth your time or not. If not, you can go get a corporate job. Yeah. You can work wherever you want and you can be happy as pie about it because you know that you did the math, you gave it a shot, and it's just not really worth it for you. And you have to, and the only way you know whether, whether it's worth it or not is you have to understand what you want from the business from a standpoint of long term. Is it something that's paying for your kids' college tuition? Is it something that's going to, you know, drive your freedom in life financially? Like all those things you have to keep in mind because worthwhile today may not be worthwhile tomorrow. And so many business owners, five years, six years into their business, are burnt out simply because they don't remember why they even started it. 
They don't right. remember what it was, what the means, the, the means justify the end. They don't even know what they were using the business to create. And a lot of times that has to be defined in order for it to be worthwhile. So make sure you do that homework, make sure you know what you want from this business, what the profit is going to go towards. Uh, and then I think from there, that could be a driving force to keep you passionate, keep you enthusiastic about what the, the business success looks like. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this push podcast and you say, God, they just spit out so much stuff. There's all these formulas. I need them, you can head over to JanelleCopeland.com. You can click the link in the show notes and we have a nice little freebie that's got a checklist that walks you through all these formulas so that way you can sit down and do the math on your business. I hope this was helpful. If so, please take 30 seconds to leave a review for us and we hope to see you in the next episode. Push through.